it's been snowing heavily all day and I'm sort of trapped in my shop here but as you can see it's quite cozy and I have decided to install a 5-speed in my Jaguar XK120 so if you're interested in such a project join me and this step is the hydraulic clutch installation and the uh, Tremec T5 5-speed installation and there you can see the gearbox that I'm using right there it's from a 1994 Mustang and that right there is in fact the fifth gear the overdrive which is a 0.68 to 1 overdrive so that should be quite nice and my goal is to be able to fit the uh, transmission into the car without too much uh, modification of the chassis in case someone ever wants to go back and I have not purchased a kit I've only purchased the adapter plate so I'm sort of figuring this all out as I go along um, so here you can see I, I have in fact had to trim back the cross member just the lip this is just the very lip that comes out and I trimmed that off so the whole box section is still intact and I removed the original mount and I'm planning to use an engine mount as the rear mount and in order to do this to only be able to trim this front lip I'm having to shift the engine forward a little bit by just about a quarter of an inch maybe three eighths here's a look at some of the modifications that I've done so far to the rear tail housing of the T5 so I've taken off this bit and these two side pieces and one thing you'll notice is uh, that the rear mount is at an angle compared to horizontal and it's off by about 10 degrees which is extremely annoying for trying to mount you know to the frame so what I'm planning to do is to mill this level with the rest of the transmission and I've read that apparently the reason that they so it's off by about that much it's off by about that much the reason they they put this angle in was only for clearance in the Mustang there was there wasn't any technical reason to do that so uh, I don't have a milling machine a metal milling machine but I do have a wood milling machine called a wood rat and I'm going to use the wood rat with a um, with a metal cutting bit in it and my router to mill this flat as you'll see my plan to use the wood rat didn't quite work out because it's not big enough to clamp the uh, tail housing in there but I did manage to get it all leveled out here using a belt sander and some filing tools and you can see that it's at about 0 0.4 or 0 0.5 the table and 0.7 it's within a few tenths of a degree of uh, level now all those filings. Okay so I've got the T5 test fit into the chassis now and I mounted the mount by threading drilling and threading the holes in this uh, rear support here and I have a fair amount of clearance uh, to the chassis it looks like about a quarter of an inch so I'm pleased about that. I did have to take off a little bit more on this rear area like the I took off out a little bird's mouth out of the uh, box section just in case this sags or I need to go a little bit lower I don't want it rattling against there and I do still have to phase the uh, drive line which is uh, getting the pinion angle of the differential the same as the output angle and you will also notice that I moved the clutch arm to the opposite side using the same shaft and I had been planning to use a XK150 clutch slave there with all of its associated bracketry but it turns out you also have to get a different arm and there's a lot of parts to buy so I'm going to give a pull type clutch slave a try and this is a new Willwood pull type clutch slave here 
which when you actuate it, it gets shorter. So it will pull. It will pull between there and a bracket that I'm planning to make on the back of the uh, transmission. And the other thing I'd considered is using a cone-centric clutch slave inside the bell housing there. But ultimately I decided against that because just out of fear that, you know, when it starts leaking, uh, you have to take the entire transmission apart, the whole interior, all the floors, everything, and it's a major hassle. So I have uh, shimmed the engine forward by slotting the front holes, and I'll show you how I did that. It actually wasn't too difficult. So what I did to move the engine forward, because I didn't have enough uh, play in the slots of the engine mount, was I removed this bracket here, the engine bracket, and I just uh, word the hole out a little bit there, so about uh, an eighth of an inch, and then I also word out the holes, the two slotted holes in the bottom bracket here of on the chassis. So I just did each one a little bit to allow the engine mount to go forward the quarter to three eighths of an inch extra that I needed forward. And what I used to do that was a uh, angle grinder with a carbide burr so I was able to get in here and go forward uh, with the holes to slot them, slot the lower holes a little more and this was off the car so it was much easier and I slotted this hole backwards just a little bit. So between each one an eighth of an inch I got a quarter inch to quarter to three eighths of an inch and it wasn't too difficult. So in order to clear the shifter uh, area on the Tremec I had to cut out uh, the tunnel, both tunnels, and this is the cutout required on the rear part of the tunnel, which was about half to three quarters of an inch. And here's the cutout at the front transmission tunnel, which does look substantially more uh, than the rear, and it was. It's sort of just hanging on here at the back, about a half an inch connecting the two sides. Hopefully I won't have to uh, trim any more from that. To use the Mustang input shaft, the pilot bushing area has to be turned down to fit into the Jaguar uh, crankshaft. And here's a look at the Jaguar uh, input shaft, which is significantly smaller. You can see it's about a half an inch, and the Mustang is about two-thirds of an inch. So quite a bit of material has to be removed here. It's not possible to take a Jaguar pilot bushing and ream it out uh, to fit the Mustang shaft because it ends up with a wall thickness that's way too thin. I'm cutting through the case hardening here, which is a uh, really terrible sound, so I've reduced the audio for you. This cut is a lot easier, and that's because we're through the case hardening. And the question will be whether or not to re-harden this uh, pilot end. Uh, the whole shaft is hardened, obviously, for wear on the splines where it contacts the clutch disc. Uh, I am guessing that I'm not going to have to harden it because the only time there's relative motion is when you're sitting stopped with the car in gear and the clutch depressed. That's the only time there's relative motion between the uh, oiled bronze bushing and this shaft. And you really shouldn't do that too much anyway because you're going to wear out your, your clutch uh, throwout bearing. So I am probably not going to harden this. Also, I don't want to harden it incorrectly and over harden the shaft back here and cause it to uh, crack. Just as I shut the lathe off for the last time on the final pass, my lathe belt broke. It's been on there the entire time I've owned this lathe, probably 25 years. So, uh, I don't know, it's some kind of sign, or is it just wear? Old age, caught up with it. 
I've MacGyvered the belt back together. Boy, has it seen better days. But it was uh, good enough to make the final cut and do the polishing. And that is the final result. Looks quite nice. Well, I thought I was all done, but as you can see, I'm back on the lathe here. And the reason is that when I mocked it up, um, the shaft didn't go in far enough to the uh, to the bushing, the pilot bushing on the crank. And I did some uh, more careful measuring, and it turns out that I have to cut back even further, actually, into the splines. And I've already ground off most of the uh, splines so I can remove all the case hardening, because that's the hard stuff to cut through. So I've used the grinder, my bench grinder, and actually ground around and ground the splines off, and now I can finish uh, machining it. Well, I've run into quite a problem. Uh, I was able to machine the pilot bearing area back, and I had to cut into the splines. But what I didn't anticipate is that where the clutch is riding got pushed back even further. And because it was getting into this area that ramps up in the depth of the spline, I couldn't insert the shaft far enough into the uh, crankshaft. Luckily, I was able to purchase a new shaft, which was shorter. And as you can see, the splines run further back, and the overall length is shorter. Uh, this shaft is from an 83 to 93 um, Mustang V8, and it comes this length. So I've already turned this down, and it works perfectly. The clutch is running right in the middle uh, back here of these splines. So that's junk, unfortunately, but very fortunately, uh, parts are readily available and cheap for these T5s, so um, that's good news. And just to give you an idea of how cheap the parts are, this shaft was $64. Uh, imagine if that was a Jaguar shaft, how much it would cost you. Something I found interesting, uh, if you're used to looking at transmissions, you will recognize this as a synchro ring. However, what you may not recognize is what's in here. Uh, it's this sort of fiber-like material, very um, hard fiber. And that's the synchro ring for this shaft. And the T5 has apparently all fiber synchro rings except for the overdrive synchro, which is your normal, well, what I call normal, the old brass style with the ribs that you see. Uh, on the old uh, British transmissions. Sort of a nice look at the insides of the T5 gearbox here. I have just installed the input shaft and yes I'm using the inside of my Jaguar as a workbench because I don't feel like lifting this thing out of here. So here's the third fourth synchro hub. You push it forward you get fourth gear which is straight through, power straight through. Uh, backwards is third, and then same thing with the first, second synchro hub. And fifth gear is back here. Just can't see that. Fifth gear is back here, uh, the overdrive gear, and that goes backwards, and now it's in overdrive, fifth gear. Well, if you've stuck around this long, you may also be interested in part two. I have to make the drive shaft, finalize the shifter, and the clutch linkage and clutch slave. So, signing off for now. Until next time.